Hello. It's raining. It's, <laughs> it's pouring. It's raining. Look at that. You can't even see the top of the hills. The old man is snoring. We are getting it. We're going to do a little tour oh, wow. around later. Yeah. <gasps> Usually it's just like a movie set back there. And now it looks like Ireland. I've never seen it like that. Yeah, that's a low cloud. Got your galoshes on, I see. Yup. That's quite the rain cloud. So what's going on today? Little Jeep project is on the stall. I got it some parts on order. So I thought, what better than to get back on the old Volkswagen project? A lot of comments. How are you going to open the doors? This isn't going to work. When are you going to build a car that looks nice? Well, none of that's going to happen today except for the door issue. See? That's how they work from the factory. We put those fenders in on the other side, somewhere around here. So a lot of folks are like, oh yeah, do gullwing doors, do suicide doors, cut the door. And I thought, yeah, I'll do all of that. But first, we're going to discuss a few things. Got some materials here. Again, nothing rocket science caliber. I had these hinges left over from an art car project. These are big gate hinges. Oh, wow. That's quite a pin. You can grease them. They got a little fitting on their end. Whoa. So these are built to last. These are basically brand new. They're almost never used. Just sitting around. Those are some mighty big door hinges, though, wouldn't you say? They really are. For a For car. For that little bug. <laughs> well, one thing I want to bring up also with these other selections of material, the term lead sled, right? Mm -hmm. Heavy, heavy cars. Custom cars are heavy. It's just the way it is when you're doing kind of rudimentary, hand-fabricated stuff that just might not work. It just might not work. Yeah, it's not. Got these trailer hitch stock. Oh, is that what that kind of metal is? Oh, oh yeah. You probably can't even pick this up. I'm not even gonna try. <clears throat> Dramatic enough for you? A drama. So they're telescopic, see? Like when you put the trailer hitch in your truck. This is welded to the truck. This is to the trailer hitch, so they telescopic. Mm -hmm. So if you had this assemblage of parts and you need to make the doors open, you got any ideas on how it should do? I have no ideas. I have an idea. I know you do. What if? What if the door did not hinge from the front? Imagine, if you will. How can I represent this? Oh, with a pallet. Imagine. Again, this is custom car stuff, right? It doesn't have to make, make sense at all. You got your door, right? Imagine if when you want to open the door, you either pushed a button and it was automated or it was hydraulic pressure cylinder assisted. What if the door went out past the running board and then flipped back like that? I mean, that'd be pretty dope. I thought so, too. Any ideas on how to make that happen? Not a one. Like, not even a one. Well, that's what I've been ruminating on. I got an idea, and it just might work. We're working on this side because that door is trapped by the fender. I've decided that these doors are not going to be this big. In fact, they're not even going to be this shape. In fact, they're not even going to have door tops. In fact, it's going to be a completely different arrangement of anything that any Volkswagen has ever had. So that being said, we're not even paying attention to what this door has to offer as a door. The rocker panel, this area, is going to be up and around this height. drawing a straight line across there. So you are literally, you're probably gonna have a rotating seat in here. We did on one of Victor's cars too, where it was a hydraulic lift. The seat went, it lifted up and twisted. So that's what I'm talking about. I want it to look like a very 
abbreviated entryway. Again, maybe this door jam here doesn't even exist. Maybe the door is somewhere in here. Maybe the door is just around. I can't even explain it. But the start of it is to make this unit slide out and pivot back. I'm getting all choked up just thinking about the potential. Was that dramatic enough? Yes. I think I got the point. Perfect across. intro. I'm going to use this straight edge because this will span from side to side. I'm going to put something under here. Get a little height on it. I think this should work. What I'm trying to do is find a crossover point above the tunnel that I've created but also acknowledging that a shifter rod is going to have to travel through this that, uh, structure that I'm creating. And uh, maybe a couple emergency brake cables. I don't know. Let's see. I want to just start with a straight shot at this height here. Maybe a little more shimming. What I'm going to do is measure from the rocker panel up on both sides to make sure that this is even in the car. It's interesting when it rains in the desert, it's just silent. It's I mean, it's so silent, it's weird. Well, for those in the colder climates, you know, like when it's snowing, it's just kind of like a yeah, it's a thing. Same vibe out here, you just hear dripping. So, you can see here my adjustable thingamabobber. All right, so now we're up against this. We got some adjustable support in place. I'm gonna measure from the rocker panel upwards. The reason for measuring like this is because you want the doors to slide open parallel with each other, not like it's up on a ramp. That's really what this is setting up for. It's chilly. I got gloves, I got a hat, I got pants on. It's nothing I'm used to working with. 7.5. Eight point five. It's got to come down a full half inch. I see you also have on your underoos today. <laughs> My space pants. <laughs> these are not underoos. These are space. Well, there's a microphone there too. <laughs> space pants. There's I like your, your space pants. There's Uranus in there somewhere. <laughs> Sorry, Uranus. Let's drop it a half inch. There we are, it's seven. Correct. Nine, we're way off. So it's seven and nine, we gotta be at eight and eight. My mistake. Coming up, there it is, eight. That's the number. That's a little bit on the high side. Kurt's going to creep this up a little more. That should split the difference. Yeah, eight on the number. So why I did this, there's going to be a lot, a lot, a lot of changes here through. This is the prototype mode. So all I've established is a good, strong, even surface across the car. I am going to now put this trailer hitch stock in place. Let me weld it to the car first. This will all unbolt in the end, but you start a lot of prototype stuff by just slamming an idea together, seeing if it sticks. What I'm seeing here is the rocker panel height. So the door opening is gonna be somewhere in here, maybe at the lower end, just to aid getting in. I think we'll do it at the lower end. Then the hinge will be clear of all that. I'm gonna just tack that in place real hard right now so it does not move, does not come apart.
All right, you might be thinking to yourself, wow, you know, that's one heck of a tack weld. <laughs> sure is. But it'll be pretty easy to cut through that. The idea is the door is going to be hanging off of this. All right. So we're attached strongly now to the tunnel of the car. Now I'm going to cut this off here so that we can shut the door. Take a look. I'll take a little motion. Now I'm warmed up. I see you have on your your train shirt. <laughs> what is this wardrobe assessment day? <laughs> Face pants and your train shirt. I love it. Come on. You don't have to wait till Halloween to dress up. The smoke actually glows in the dark. This is a gift from a a fan. <laughs> Very special lady. Town up the hill from us, Tehachapi, they have a pretty, pretty cool railway exhibit. And I guess these shirts are in their gift shop. I mentioned the smoke glows. It's the little things. I'm going to cut this off. a little better if I took a little more off but we should make a shirt that says it's gonna work <laughs> it's gonna work <laughs> would y'all buy it if I does help design a shirt with my good friend Heidi with it's gonna work be, the other one be that ain't going nowhere <laughs> excuse me my microphone's going somewhere help me adjust getting an uncomfortable vibe it's cold <laughs> It's cold for the desert. It's cold if you see breath. I'm going to cut that once more. Get another quarter inch off of that. There it is. No interference. Perfect. Okay. So what I'm thinking with this bracket, it could get cut anywhere after the fact, but I've established a nice straight shot. The door is shut. So now we're even, we're very strong, and it could be segmented in the end. Maybe the seat back is gonna hit it. We could change some of those parameters, but uh, the key here is to just get these rails, especially the sliding rail into shape uh, for a test. And I was thinking, the bigger one, the outside diameter one, is not wide enough to span the car. That's why I didn't just throw a giant chunk of that across. But uh, being that we only have this much of it, I could split this now and leave this as our spanning member and then weld it to that. And it's split. And it's spanning. And it's a member. See, this is the thing with working with junk. I could have just ordered the right piece, but instead I'm using a piece of scrap. You can see here, we're missing about that much, right? But the opportunity that that will provide is if we split this, look, we have room for all the gear to go through. So we have one on each side, but this is our parallelism. This is what keeps it all straight when we tag it up. Is that making any sense? Not yet. I think fast. This is what I do at three o'clock in the morning. I have this all worked out. Spinning, spinning, spinning. That Jeep quandary had me stuck for a second, but I think I got it figured. So this is 40, half of 40, number 20. Put that on the saw. I might have to go put on my warmer boots. It's cold. <laughs> Heavy metal. Mm -hmm. Far cry from cutting that sheet metal on the chop top, huh? 
-hmm. Takes time. You'll see as this progresses, these big heavy shapes are going to get whittled down more and more. But the structure is going to remain. I may hole saw through this to lighten it up, but this is the rudimentary stack of stuff. I'm going to measure this internal structure and cut this to match. Because what we're going to do, we're going to slide these inside the car with these split. That way they're still parallel. So 50 will do us. Cut off a 50 inch schlock of that stuff. Carry on. All right. While that was in the saw, I took the liberty of welding a few things and dressing for the occasion because it cooled off again. I had to put my warmer boots on. Yeah. My feet were really cold. At this point, we have this piece that's as wide as the material in there. And see what I did? Uh, we're going to be pushing. This is going to set up here, but because it's a sleeve, see, we don't want to hit this door jam. So I set up this one so we could just shift it out a little bit on the same plane to get some clearance. But if we're sliding that over this tube, this cannot be touching. So I found this round stock. It just keeps going on and on. The madness, right? I love it. I love it. I've been thinking about this for hours. Well, out here, there's not a lot to think about today. <laughs> there's that. So you got your two independent pieces, right? Whoop, come on, independent piece. That one's got a little something here. It's going to need to get sanded right there. But see how they're thicker? If this is laying down on our brace, then it's not going to work. So I was thinking I would cut off a piece of this material to act as a shim. See, they're the same thickness. So if I was to weld that, if it was riding on this, this is still going to be hitting, right? So this, look, it's thicker. I'm going to cut off a couple sections of this. You might even have to get in the car. It's going to get intense. I'm right now. Have to get in the car? No, I'm joking. But just to see, because. This big fat stack of parts. I mean, this is getting heavy. It's going to get whittled down, but you got to start somewhere. If I had one of them fancy computer programmers, it might be a different story. I don't have that. What's that called? SolidWorks? It's all like you can rotate it in 3D. You know, we we're looking at I have up. no idea. Me either. That's about as high tech as I get. I just pulled that name out of a hat. Yeah, that's about as high tech as I get. <laughs> An iPhone, a gimbal, hard drive, and a MacBook. That's Here about I am it. With my 80 year old saw, doing just fine. The whole structure is going to be supported on these two tiny pins. It's going to work. It's going to be a good temporary mock up. See if I can wrestle this baby into the car. And I'm making it this heavy, heavy duty, because the doors are going to be sliding out. So the whole, so you can't really have, can't really have any structure out here because this unit needs to slide through. So you could say, well, why would you put one on the internal diameter? Because the internal diameter of a trailer hitch has a welded bead in there. And it's not smooth. I could feel it right there. So, all of your suggestions. <laughs> so, again, everything is oversized just to see if it's going to work. It's doing a little rocking and rolling, but see here, it doesn't hit anything. Oh, I think I'm sorry, it's starting to make sense. It's starting to see the light. Yeah, I'm gonna want that about there and there. 
something that always fascinated me was those mini trucks with the dancing beds and the different parts that would pop off and rotate. And uh, I'm sure this is how they started with this massive, heavy assembly of ideas and just kept refining it. So that's where we're at with this. This is a true inspired moment, seeing if it flies. Now I'm gonna weld those pins to everything. So what you have now, a left and a right, will slide out independently. Ah, you slide it ah I you see. You gotta stop, and you just create a stop out here somewhere. Or if it was on a slider. One thing I'm seeing already is the interior seat room is gonna be compromised. But we're just working on theory here. I can always lower this. I can always move it back about four inches as well. So again, just to test out the idea of the door doing what we want, I'm gonna leave it in place because this is just hacked in. Once this assembly is created, you can position it and create a new bracket that mounts to the door anywhere. So this is where the hinge lives. And we could go anywhere to right about there so that that doesn't hit, right? Let's put this in position and see what happens. Oh my God, I love it. You thought I was weird yesterday. <laughs> Wait till tomorrow. <laughs> And this is one of the points I was making. Ooh. As I'm building, everything comes apart. So I can work around, disassemble, lighten it up towards the end, drill it, etc. the weight of the whole door will be on this hinge pin. One, it's open, not when you're driving. So the door latch will work. The stock door latch is gonna go click right into place. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So the front will need something as well, but. Oh, heck yeah. The tire's this big. Comes out easy way past that. Makes the marks on the door where this is going to contact as we shut it. We're gonna have to clearance for that. So it's interesting because that is gonna come in right here. So you have a nice area to weld to. This is very strong. It's gonna cross over the whole door. Hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna do that and turn it in. Yeah. I'm gonna cut this with the grinder. So for structure, I'm gonna need to cross over something through here. Uh, remember, the bottom of the door is going to get cut completely off. So we're just playing around with the idea of this pivoting. This is gonna be part of the car body, and from here up will be the door that opens. Windows will still roll up and down because of this. We'll just have to make a new bracket in here. 
But uh, yeah, that's what we're up to. Testing, and I got some flat bar. I think it just might do the job. First, I'm gonna take a look. This should shut. Oh, is that hitting? That's hitting there. See, prototype stuff. Got to cut that hinge. We're gonna need about that much. So I'm gonna cut right through this whole thing. No. I, don't, I don't know what I'm doing. Let's put this in the saw and cut it. This is the story of discovery. This, ladies and gentlemen, is a true first for me. He's gonna do it. That batter took out the hinge. We're gonna need something here. Oh, I know the other hinge because it's the same dimension. You run into this a lot with a saw like this. Uh, when you're cut, trying to cut a small piece, you're gonna need a partner that can hold up the other side of the little vise. Hmm. Sounds a lot like marriage. Darling, would you hold up the other side of my vice while I chop this? These are rated for a giant gate, so I'm not worried about cutting them down, as I mentioned, with all the other stuff. Oversized to start with, follow through. You look at the hinge pin on a regular car door, there's two of them, smaller than that. Usually probably smaller than that. So this thing is a massive in comparison. And we're not messing with the actual grab on the barrel part of it. This is just extra that you would weld to the gate or whatever. The whatever being your Volkswagen bug project or anything else you may use. This is going to be the new, the new name for this is the squeaky metal channel. You have all the noises. Let it go. Get a little loose. Put some juice on there. There isn't a really strong grab on this material, so it, it twists a little as it's working in the saw. Unfortunately. You want to be careful because you can break the blade like that. I just, I know this piece. So yeah, see, that's a solid chunk of steel. It's still massive. There it is. Bada bing. Sweet. I changed my mind. I actually want to trim this up a little bit. See what I'm dealing with? I was going to weld it to here, but if I trim up on the sheet metal a little bit, I'll have this clearance and I have a big pad to weld across. That will be mucho stronger. -o. So now with this being turn turned up, works. Yeah, I like that. I like that so much. I bought the company. So this is going to be perfect. We're going to measure. You know, the door panel has this little recess. It's just about ideal for what we're doing. I'm just going to measure up to here. That's eight and three quarters. So I'm going to measure over here. At eight and three quarters. And I'm going to clean all the paint off of this area and this area. Because what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a little New York accent on it. I'm going to throw a flat bar right across there at 33 and an eighth inches. All this is cut, and I'm just going to sand that paint off. That worked really well. I think it's 
Yeah, see that fits right in that hollow there. You can make a mark. We're gonna need to clean it. You wanna grab that. You wanna grab that under top. Yep. I'm gonna nip off this corner so we don't trap that screw. So what you're not going to be able to see, because I'm going to have to shut the door. <laughs> I'm going to set this on here and then weld it to the door when it's shut so that this whole thing does that. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm going to rest it on that hinge, as I mentioned, and then set up our height here by the mark. Put a clamp on it. How's that look on the marker? Pretty much there. Doesn't have to be exact, but it has to be close. So what I'm going to try to do is remove this door without bending anything and try to get some more weld on that hinge. I know what we could do. We're going to cut this door right off. Would you weld it shut? No, we have to take the hinges off so that it won't swing. It'll just pop off. So you're just going to cut the door off? Yeah. You know the little thing inside that doesn't let the door swing open? Uh huh. It's still in there. Oh. That's what I mentioned about prototypes. Is that why it won't pop off now? Yep. That's the world of prototypes. It'll go. I have to cut that little piece off. Aha, uh -huh, the culprit. I'm going to blast some welds on there. So naturally, the idea here being I want to grab as much structure of the door as possible. But for right now, just to see if it's going to work, is getting a glorified tack weld put on here. You know, something that's very strong, but I have to twist this a little and have to cut it and twist it trying to avoid that it might work. All right. We got a good grab there on the structure of the door, a little here, a little there, spreading out the grip. So this is going to need a bunch of stops. In other words, a stop for when it comes out, you don't want it to just fall off the car. And for when it pivots, you don't want it to go around the clock. So this pin here, 
uh, you can see I just pulled it right out of the car. So what it's going to have is some sort of arm that comes out, and that will be like a clocking device. As you turn it, uh, it'll stop on the structure. So it'll only open, it'll only swivel open so much. And you're probably going to want it to come around, you know, we'll look at it right now. How about that? Enough discussion. I want to see. You're not the only one. <laughs> So yeah, we put the pin back in place. Oh my gosh. This is weird science 101. That something's different already. Oh, we gotta cut. Oh, the whole thing's cut on this. That thing's trapping it now. We gotta cut this off because this is gonna want to slide straight in. So anything in the way of that. Not gonna work. Not gonna work. Nice smooth door jam now. Try number two. Shut the door. Got some trash in there. So that's what I was saying. We're going to put a device on here that'll hold that right there. I'm still here. It's a loose idea. Did it work? I said it, it was going to work. It's chilly. I'm going to do one more graceful motion now that we know how it works. It needs a lot of refinement. A lot of refinement. A lot of refinement. Is the concept proven? I think so. You'll hold the door latch. We're going to have to come up with something on this end, but again, this is all loose. That's why I'm reaching in to hold it all together. But you're going to press the door button. That latch comes undone. Oh, I locked it. <laughs> you locked One, yourself out. Lock myself out. <laughs> press the door button. This is like a used car salesman right now. <laughs> This bottom of the door won't be hanging up here. The hinge is here. So this, so you see, you don't have this big intrusion. This is the, this is the door bottom. This is still oh, with the car. Oh, so you're going to cut some of that off. Yeah. Yeah. Hence the beginning of the video where you said it was going to be higher up. I mean, it works, right? It said it works, right? You keep on locking yourself. I do. <laughs> I have to get a different latch. But you can see if it's motorized, that'll work. So I'm I'm guessing it's probably gonna want to come out even further than the fender. I like out there there. That's look, plenty of clearance. Now we look over here. Now, once we set up the stopper, you know, I think it looks good kind of like that, but it'll have an adjustable thing. Usually that's just a nut and a bolt right in here. So as this comes around, it's just going to click somewhere in there. But again, you can see the theory. Everything comes apart. That way I can refine it. That slides. 
And that pin goes in. Right? Mm -hmm. Have to work on that a little bit too. And again, that's all door gaps and whatnot. Definitely Gotta different. <laughs> huh? Gonna work. I mean, for an hour and a half of experimenting, it's gonna work. See, the more times you mess with it, the more it makes sense. So there'll be a little stopper or whatever. It could even be a hydraulic or motorized 12-volt uh, ram. But the thing was, it's got to clear the fender so we can come. Shoot, we can go way out here. We can come out to here if we needed to. Plenty of room. Yeah. Might have to put some wheels, little bearings on that slider to just keep it even more positive. But that's development. I think our concept is proofed. Yeah, see now once you get to know where the binding up parts are, you can work through that. Ta-da! How do you feel about yourself right now? Well, it's still not weird enough. I got a lot more coming. <laughs>